I'm Apostle Linda Laracy, and I invite you to follow the Hebrew calendar with me. Every month we move by the Hebrew calendar because each month has a significant meaning and it helps us to align ourselves with the focus of the Lord. This is the month of Heshvan. This is the month of which we have the flood, uh, the bitterness of the flood, but the sweetness of the coming out of the ark after the flood waters had receded. The Lord wants to turn any bitter water in your life into sweet. And I think now of uh, the situation that Israel is in, and we know the scripture says that the Jew is first. And so we align ourselves with the Jews. We pray and we intercede for them. We pray for great victory over the enemy. We know the Lord is moving. You know, the Father God many times has to expose corruption. Uh, the word Hamas, if you don't understand the complete word of that, it, it actually has Hebrew derivative meaning a robbery. And this type of government that is over Gaza, unfortunately, it is a government without a moral compass. And so we see this a uh, conflagration now, but we're looking for great victory. We're looking for peace. And though it is bitter at this time, we know the goodness of God will bring sweetness to all people if we yield unto the Lord. So I'm encouraged to pray, intercede, release your angels over the country of Israel during this most momentous time. Many negative things happened to the Jewish nation during Heshvan. But we know that the Lord works all things out for our good if we're called according to his purpose. We and we love him. So the Lord's not finished until he has brought things to goodness in your life. So I pray that you are called according to his purpose. You understand that the Lord has a life assignment upon you and you want to fulfill that life assignment. The tribe of Heshvan is Manasseh. And Manasseh has a beautiful meaning. And we find that in Genesis 41, 51, Joseph named his firstborn Manasseh, saying, God has made me to forget all my hardship and my father's household. Jo Joseph had a most interesting life. He, he, he was amazing in, in what he had to go through. He learned early on what his life assignment was. He perhaps spoke it out prematurely. It caused a lot of problems, but it also caused the opposition of the enemy to come forth because whatever your life designed by God is, once the enemy understands that and sees that, opposition will will grow to cause you to resist following the purposes of God for your life. But if you will stay on course, the Lord will make you forget all the persecution, all the tribulation, all the heaviness that you have had to go through because of the assignment that the Lord has put on your life. So this is what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, I believe, right now. We are to forget, beloved. And we are to fight, fight the good fight of faith. And we are to move forward in the assignment that God has for our lives. And he has a beautiful assignment for you. A high calling, a prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And this is for every person that is called upon the name of the Lord. So we're looking at forgetting. 
Isaiah 43, 18, stop dwelling on past events and brooding over times gone by. Holy Ghost is very, very directive here. Stop it. So if you have a tendency to fall into brooding over past events, or you're, you're thinking, uh, or dwelling basically, that's a good word, dwelling and brooding on the past, that has to stop in your life. Now, all of us are going to have fleeting memories of things that have happened to us. The problem is, is when these memories get us down and where we all we do is think about the memories and we want to go back maybe to even a brighter time in our life, maybe when you were younger or maybe uh, before your uh, children had grown and left the house. You know, we can all look at the past and find good things. But sometimes we even brood over things that are negative when we have grudges against people, when people have spoken against us and we hold on to these things and we think about them and we rehash them. Uh, Joseph said that the Lord had made him to forget the trouble of his father's household. Many of uh, traumatic uh, of our traumatic events in our life happen as a child. We think of things, maybe things our parents have said. We've twisted things our parents have done. You know, our parents had, you know, they did the best they could. If you, your your parent wasn't sold out to Jesus and wasn't under the covenant of the Lord, uh, it's likely that you've suffered some, some damage. Uh, but you know what? Let's move forward. Uh, just think about the little children that have been molested or have been physically abused or uh, worse than that, being totally neglected by their parents. If you haven't been able to make peace with your past and to truly give that up to the Lord, you will have a tendency to brood over that, uh, to dwell on those things. And we must, if we're going to fulfill our destiny in the Lord, we have to stop that. And this is why I am doing something new. The Lord is doing something new. Now, you may not realize that he's doing something new in your life, but Jesus makes all things new. And we are a new creature in Christ. The old things have passed away. What? Behold, all things become new. So in Christ, there is a newness. But if we are set, if our flesh, our souls that are ruled by our flesh, if we always are constantly thinking on things of the past, it is going to block us. It's going to encumber uh, us. It's going to impede us from seeing the new things that God wants us uh, to do. The new things that God is developing in our life. Since I am doing something new, it's springing up. Can't you see it? And if we're dwelling on the past, beloved, we cannot see it. So it's crucial as you move in this month of Heshvan that you see it as a new beginning, that you take the promises of God, that you take his prophetic word spoken over you, that you hold them tightly to you, that you make a decision that you're going to release your past. You're, you're going to forget that. You can ask the Father, God, Lord, just grace me to be able to fully forget all these negative things because I don't want to dwell on them anymore. I want to obey you and I want to see the new thing that is springing up right now in my life. And there are going to be great opportunities that you're going to have this year. And look right now in Heshvan. This is the year 5784, and we've spoken about this earlier, of the open door, pay dollar. The Hebrew words pay dollar, meaning an open door. So there are going to be things that are going to spring up, things that weren't, but now things are coming, and they're coming quickly. So pay attention to those things so that you can know the Lord is bringing you that opportunity for a new thing to develop in your life, and it'll be a good thing. 1 Corinthians 16, 9 says this, a huge door of opportunity for good has opened up here. Apostle Paul was speaking of uh, an opportunity for an effectual ministry in Ephesus. 
And he says, a huge door has opened up for me for a good work. But then he says, there is also mushrooming opposition. So, beloved, you're going to have to understand that you're going to have to fight the good fight of faith. When these doors open for you, you're going to have to walk through them uh, in faith. And the enemy is going to show his hand to keep you from walking through the door. There will be opposition. And how will it come? Sometimes it comes through other people. Um, it, tribulation starts to come in your life. Persecution comes into your life. It may even be your own flesh that is rising up, that is pulling you back from going through the huge door the Lord is opening up for you. So be very, very clear this month in Heshvan that the, the Lord is wanting to turn bitterness of the past into the sweetness of the present. He'll do that by opening doors for you. There is a double anointing that you can receive this month to walk through these doors that the Lord is presenting to you. These new things that are coming forth that are going to be a good work unto the Lord. Very important. But there is an element of having a fighting faith. Remember, Apostle Paul said, I have fought the good fight of faith. We struggle against the enemy. We wrestle against the enemy. Our real fight is, are we going to allow these things of the enemy to steal our faith and no longer move in faith? And so we have to have a fighting faith, a not a passive faith, an active faith that is able to resist the enemy and believe that God is moving now springing up in your life new opportunities and we are going to throw off anything impediment encumbrance any weight that would keep us from being able to see that open door as we go forward let's look at first timothy 1 18 through 19 apostle paul is speaking to timothy his spiritual child timothy my child in accordance with the prophecies previously made about you, that by them you may wage the good warfare. Here again, we see that when the Lord starts to move in your life, when he starts to open up doors, you have been given prophetic words over your life. You need to hold on to those prophetic words. And you are going to choose whether they're going to come to pass in your life or not. That's where a fighting faith comes into play. Because the enemy certainly doesn't want any prophetic word over your life fulfilled. That's a very, very powerful uh, truth that you need to take to heart. Once Joseph understood, he had the dream about how he would be in great authority and be in government and and it turned out to be the truth the enemy began to attack him particularly through his family members and even when he got to the land of egypt where this pr prophetic word would be fully uh fulfilled he, he had great opposition so he had to remain in god and he had to believe that though the devil means things for evil the lord can turn it around for good and that's how you have to frame work your own life and that's the narrative that you want to stay on because that is the narrative of faith the spirit of faith is going to speak believe it's not going to speak doubt it's going to speak forth the word of faith over every situation despite what it looks like in the natural. So he's saying the prophetic words that you've been given, you use those prophetic words to wage warfare. It's very powerful. You know, if the Lord has spoken over you that you're going to have this ministry or you're going to rise up uh, and lead many to Christ, you're going to move in great authority. Uh, the Lord is giving you a gift of discernment that you can discern evil uh, from good, all of these things that the the words that have been spoken to you by elders, by spiritual leaders, 
Uh, many times they don't Im uh, come to pass quickly. Sometimes it's a, a slow go. But that gives you time to be able to meditate on those words. And when the devil comes to rob you of the hope of that prophetic word, you're able to speak the prophetic word back to the enemy and speak it to yourself. And that, my friend, is how you wage good warfare. And we are to hold on to faith and a good conscience. So it's very important that when you're given a prophetic word, you fight the good fight of faith by holding on to your fa uh, faith. You don't let it loose. You, you don't give up. You don't say, well, I've lost faith in God. God didn't come through for me. God didn't see this word come to pass. So I'm no longer going to serve him. See, that, that is the enemy moving in you to rob from you the Lord's plan for your life. And he can overcome you if you don't take a stand and resist the devil. And how do you resist him? You resist him to the, through the strength of the Lord. The Lord will give you grace to be able to resist the enemy. And when you do that by not folding, by not yielding to his lie, but standing strong in Christ, he will flee from you. It also says here to hold on to a good conscience. So it's very important that you keep a good conscience. And we have to understand the enemy is always going to come to accuse. You're not a perfect person, right? You do make mistakes. You do sin. And if you dwell in your sin or you allow that enemy to speak to you and accuse you and say, how is God going to use you? You're, you're, you're not even a good person. You're this, that. Look what you did. Uh, if you start to open up your heart to accusations of the enemy, and you can't hold on to a good conscience, then it's going to be very difficult for you to fulfill the Lord's plan for your life. So how do we hold on to a good conscience? Well, when we do wrong, we confess our sin, and he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We have no righteousness of our own. Our righteousness is in the faith of the blood of Jesus Christ. This is how we maintain a good conscience. It's not through religious works or trying to be a good person. No, Jesus is the good person. And when we dwell in him and live in him and his word dwells within us, he is going, his power, his life is going to emanate from us. And we will do good even as he does good. But it's he that is working in us, not we ourselves. He is at work in us to do his good pleasure. He is willing it in our lives he is doing it in our lives as we abide in the lord so saint don't allow the devil to accuse you and to cause you to lose your good conscience because if that happens you will actually withdraw from moving forward in the design that the lord has for your life going on first timothy 4 14 through 15 underscores uh, the importance of the word of life that's been spoken over you. The powerful gift that operates in your life. You have to understand the Holy Ghost is in your life. He is the true gift of God. But he works through you in different ways, different functions. And everybody uh, has different operations of the Holy Spirit in their life. And that's why it's important to be a part of a body of Christ so that we can all profit by each uh, diversities of the gifts of the Holy Spirit that are granted to each person. We haven't all eaten the wisdom pie, have we? No, the Lord wants us to gather together with his saints. He wants us to be able to align ourselves with one another. He wants to use our gifts. He wants to operate through us to bless people. People can profit through the giftings that the Lord's given you. But also in return, you are going to profit by the gifts the Holy Spirit has given others that you have aligned with. Very important that you do not forsake the assembling 
of yourself together. Beloved, find a house of the Lord. I would even suggest even stronger than that. Find an apostolic prophetic house where a great emphasis is put on maturing and teaching you how to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Every Christian is not a disciple of Christ, but every disciple of Christ is a Christian. The powerful gift that operates in your life was activated through the prophecy they spoke over you. So prophetic words are so powerful. They go into your heart and they bring, they energize the gifts of the spirit to manifest. It says, make all of this your constant meditation and make it real. That's really good. It says, Make this your constant meditation. What he's talking about, he's talking about the prophetic words. What's been spoken over you? What has elders spoken over you? How have the elders laid their hand on you and spoken words of truth over you? Prophetic words. Now, if you say, well, I, I've never had anybody do that. You need to find an assembly of believers where this is a part of the way they move because these are giftings that are vital to the body of Christ. And you need to be able to hear by elders, by people who are more uh, spiritually mature than you are, that are further along in their walk, what the Holy Spirit is saying through these people. When that spoken word is over you, there's an activation that happens. Then you begin to remember those words. You hold them tight. You don't you don't release them. You hold them. You speak over them. You declare they're coming to pass in your life. And I have to tell you, I've had prophetic words spoken to me many, 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 many years ago. <laughs> More years than I would like to think. And I've held on to those words. And I can tell you that many of those words have come to pass, but many of the wor those words have not fully come to pass. So I'm still speaking those things, believing those things that activates that those gifts in my life through the Holy Spirit. That's going to make those prophetic words possible to come forth. And that is so powerful. So there is an effort we make on our part, and that is we have to meditate and make these prophetic words words real for us with your life so everyone can see you are moving forward very important people need to see that you're going forward in your life in the lord that's one of the problems with the church today people are just in their old old they're in the same old usual stuff same old usual suspects you know never moving forward not really changing not really going, just kind of going around in circles. People have to see that there's power in your life, that God is at work in your life, that you're rising in your anointing, that yes, beloved, you were over here, but you're no longer over here. You're now over here. You have made progress. That brings glory to God. And what else does it do? It gives hope to other people that what the Lord has done for you, because you've held on to these words, you've meditated on these words, you haven't uh, let go of your faith, you've held on to a good conscience. Those words are coming to pass in your life. That is what defeats the opposition of the enemy. Psalm 78.10 makes it clear they didn't really believe the promises of God. They refused to trust him and move forward in faith. This is the issue. If we do not move forward in faith, it is because we're not trusting God and we're not believing in the promises that God has made us. We have really allowed ourselves to get sucked up in despair and we've lost hope. And that's because we haven't ho held on to the hope of Jesus Christ, been anchored, our soul, our emotions anchored in the hope of the Lord, in his promises. 
which are always uh, amen, yes, and amen. That's such a beautiful, beautiful word that Apostle spoke. Apostle Paul spoke. Going on Hebrews 12, 1, let us throw off every encumbrance and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with endurance the race set out for us. That's part of what we have to do. Listen, we got to throw off every impediment, everything we doubt. Uh, we have to throw off despair, throw off depression, throw these things off, throw all thinking about the past and brooding over the past. Throw that out of the window. Stop dwelling on that and open your eyes to see what God is doing. And closing, Apostle Paul summarizes the message. Philippians 3, 12 through 16. So I keep on running and you have to keep on running and struggling to take hold of the prize. So there is a struggle. You run. But there is a struggle. There is the fight of faith. And all of us have to have that fighting faith, that active faith. We struggle against uh, the enemy, you know, in an atmosphere in, in the unseen realm. But we can win because the glory of God that is on us is far greater than any power that the enemy has. He wants to throw his weight on you, beloved. But what you do is you throw the weight of the glory of God, which is on him, on you, on him and flip it around for your good in the Lord. I forget what is behind me. And I struggle for what is ahead. I run toward the goal that God offers and all of us who are mature should think in this way. And if any of you think differently, God will make it clear to you. And I pray th in this message, God is making it very clear to you what you're to do. But we must keep going in the direction that we are now headed. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. Be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in the name of Jesus. Amen.